comprehend the supreme failed. You make Indra went to comprehend failed. Okay, and what to speak of human beings. So basically, here we have the Lord. Here we can say is Nirguna, Niragara also, and uh, Nirvishesha. At the same time, he has a form. So he is Saguna Sakara also. Okay, and he appears in a form which uh, uh, we can approach him, we can worship him, we can understand him in our own way. We are worshippers of Vishnu, we can see him as Vishnu. We are worshippers of Lord Rama, we can see him as Lord Rama or Lord Krishna. We are worshippers of Shiva, we can see him as Shiva. We are worshippers of Durga, we can see him as Durga. You see, in our Vedic tradition there are three, there are many samudayas of course, but three main streams, one is Vaishnava, the other is Shaiva, the other is Shakta, the three main. So here, can we go back to the previous one? Previous one? Previous one? Previous one? Uh, Shri Tara Upanishad also says the same thing. Well, previous one. So here, if you see on the left side, Lord Vanavadra, he represents the Shaiva Parampara. He is the Shesh Ananta who was there in the earlier manifestation. So he appears as Balabhadra, Balaram, the elder brother of Lord Krishna, the Krishna Bhakta. Then on the left, extreme left, is Lord Jagannatha. He is the representative or symbol of the Vaishnava Parampara. And you can see him as Lord Krishna or Sri Rama or whatever. And in the middle is Devi, Subhadra, who represents the Shakta Parampara. You can see her as Durga, as Kali, as Mahalakshmi, as Saraswati. So, here we have a Lord who uh, we worship in our own way. They become what we would like our deity to become. They are not in any conclusive, rigid, definite identity. They become everything. They are one in all and all in one. And when you put all of them together, they become Lord Jagannath. If you recollect, the tree floating was one tree, right? It was not four trees. Out of that one, four are manifested, which means the four are in fact one. But okay. which you also don't know. Brahma is inquisitive. So what my Lord? And Lord Vishnu says, okay, there is a place on this planet Earth, Mati Loka, just as I am in Vaikuntha, in my abode, I am also there, in the same way. So why don't you go there and see, it's not known to you, but I am telling you that it is a hit, and Lord Vishnu describes the location, and which is Purushottam Shetra Puri. Go there, and then slowly you will come to know other things. So Lord Brahma goes there, and what he sees, now this is, you know, probably sometime, during the first Paratha of this Brahma. Brahma has got a life of 100 years. Brahma is 100 years. And when he has completed his 50th year, this thing is happening. The first 50 years of Brahma is ending. So Brahma goes, and that's Pushtam Kshetra Puri. It's a huge uh, mountain, huge mountain, densely forested, inaccessible, and he does not know. Even Brahma does not know that the Lord is there, but since uh, the Lord has told that he is there, he goes up and what he sees? He sees a huge lake sort of a thing which looks like a lake that is known as Rohini Kunda, which is the uh, substance of the waters of dissolution. And then above that lake, there is a huge tree, Kalpa Vriksha, and under the tree he has darshan of the Lord. Not, not the Lord that we see now in Puri, in the temple, but Lord Vishnu. Uh, in the scriptures he is referred to as Madhava, and also as Nila Madhava. Why? Because he looks like blue sapphire gemstone, Nila Mani Vikraha. And uh, to his left, is Devi Mahalakshmi. 
and Mahalakshmi, interestingly, is holding the Veena. Saraswati <laughs> holds, but she is holding the Veena. And above both them, and sort of giving them uh, sort of a protection, is Lord Shesha, Shesha Ananda, that's Lord Vasudeva. You know, in, in Vaikuntha, in Kshira, Samudra, Lord Vishnu Sayya, Lord Shesha Naga, purified gold, when shaped according to one's choice, gets this or that name in this world and brings about this or that satisfaction, booking with such glory, the Lord has become manifest here. And those who have studied the Upanishads or the scriptures will know, this is a very common example that you have the bracelet, you have the necklace, you have the anklet, all that is made of gold. So before they became the anklet and the necklace, what was what, what it was? It was gold. Why it is a necklace? What is in essence? It is gold. When it is melted, what it goes, it becomes gold. But the one appears as the many. In a sense it is one. The truth is one. So and it's up to us how we would like to worship him and out of his sheer compassion, he appears to satisfy us because of our devotion. Okay, let's go. So, uh, then of course, uh, um, Lord um, Devadishi tells King, Oh King, this is the time, ask for some boon. Lord is very happy with you because you have so much you have done and God has been manifested. He will give you, grant you anything that you ask for. So, you know, he could have asked for so many things, you know. The Supreme Lord, after all, uh, he asked for only one thing, Oh Lord, how may I serve you? Okay. So now, amazing thing happens, that Lord, although what, like wood, look, seems to be made physically out of inert matter, starts to speak. So the scriptures say, Vibhu, the Lord speaks, and the Lord tells the Dhamna that this is the Seva that you will perform for me, the daily worship, the Dhyatra, this Yatra, Sanyatra. The Lord Himself gives the menu, the prescription that you have to perform this. So, this is again even unique. And of course, um, let's go forward. Maharaja Instagram then starts worshipping, performing all that, but then he has gone to Brahmaloka and come back. He has no more any interest on the earthly activity. He has to go back to Brahmaloka, so he hands over the uh, uh, job to the king of Odisha, that is next king Narada. Now you do all this, all this that the Lord himself has said, and I go back, go, go back to Brahmaloka. So Maharaja Indra goes to Brahmaloka, and the tradition continues. Now let's go very quickly. So and the next one. So in the Upanishads, uh, it is said, Apati, Pata, Yavano, Grahita, etc., which is in English, He, the Supreme Being, is without hands, feet, and yet moves and grasps. He sees, though without eyes. He hears, though without ears. He knows whatever is to be known. And of Him there is no, no, no knower. They speak of Him of the first, the Purusha, and the great. Kaivalya Upanishad. Similarly, in I think, uh, next slide. Uh, so like this in other Upanishads also it is there, in other scriptures it is there. So the Lord is um, something which is uh, beyond our comprehension. But then for our comprehension He appears with form. Lord is with form, but He can also be without form. So the great, let's uh, uh, go to the next slide. So the uh, special significance of the Lord here is this, that He is in a form which totally dumbfounds us, which is beyond our intellect, which we cannot comprehend. Because as the scriptures tell us, that He is not an avatari, He is the avatara. He is the Supreme Lord from whom all the avatars manifest from time to time in the different ages, whether it is Sri Rama or Sri Krishna or any other avatar. So, He 
he is uh, both, as you see, with the form, but with the form that you cannot understand, that is to say, it is beyond the comprehension of the mind and intellect. If the mind can grasp and intellect can understand, then it is, cannot be the supreme lord. It can be an avatar, but not the supreme lord. Okay? Because the mind is finite, intellect is finite, and the lord is infinite. The finite cannot get to the infinite. And in some Upanishads it is also said that why you went to comprehend, he failed. And Agni went to comprehend the Supra. So Germany starts narrating that story, which we will now unfold before you. The story begins like this, that we have Lord Brahma in a very, very perplexed situation. He is thinking very deeply and wondering, why am I making this creation? As you know, Lord Brahma creates the entire universe from time to time. There is a dissolution, then there is a creation. We, those who believe in the scriptures of Sanatana, Vedic, Dharma, understand that this entire universe is cyclical. It's almost anadi. There is a creation and there is dissolution and there is a creation. This is all the play of the divine. Well, Lord Vishnu, the Supreme Lord, probably enjoys this, otherwise he will be bored. So he likes this, you know, like we like to see drama and all that. So Lord likes to watch all these things happening and so he appoints Lord Brahma to carry on the job. But Lord Brahma is tired. He creates and after, uh, after his 100 years, uh, 100 years of you for one, sorry, after one day of Brahma, which is known as a Kalpa, there is the night time of Brahma, which is equivalent to the daytime, when there is complete dissolution. And again when the day comes, again Brahma has to create the entire universe, uh, not this, our solar system, not this galaxy, all the galaxies uh, that exist. He is tired, he says, why am I creating and then again there is dissolution, I am tired of it. Can there be an end to it? So, end means everyone is liberated. You see, so long as there is karma, there is the seed. And when there is the seed, the plant will sprout. Where there is a cause, the effect will take place inevitably. So, he says that, can everyone be liberated? So there is no karma to be unfolded, there is no seed to sprout.